have a very unique view here with Goldman's private client group. I'm wondering how you're seeing the ultra wealthy clientele invest differently in this market, especially as your outlook through the end of the year remains quite bullish. Uh, thank you very much for having me. In terms of our client base, we actually cover a very broad range of clients. So we have uh, the ultra high net worth clients, but we also have through our mutual funds, retail clients, and through our uh, financial wealth management group, we also have clients who are not maybe at the level that they can totally afford to sit this out. So there's a whole broad spectrum out there that we have to think about when we uh, give our views and provide investment recommendations for them. And it's mixed. At the end of the day, it's a function of people's tolerance for uncertainty and market volatility. We know that these uh, numbers that are coming out from an economic perspective all look very alarming, but we've never had a global pandemic of this kind in the lifetime of most people who are in the markets. So that's quite unusual. And in terms of how clients react, some people recognize that they can easily tolerate this volatility and can follow our recommendation to maybe start adding a little bit to their equity portfolio and reduce their fixed income or their cash positions. Other people are nervous and just want to set aside some cash and fixed income and be totally comfortable that they don't have to worry about anything mm -hmm. for a year or two, given the uncertainty. Not that anybody is expecting this to last in this current context for that long, but right. just for them to be comfortable. And then we have some people who just want to sit on the sidelines. So Our recommendation is that there is a light at the end of the tunnel across all three major categories of things people have to think about, one of which would be in terms of the broad health care questions, whether it's shortages or whether it's therapies or vaccines mm -hmm. at some point in the future, preferably sooner for most things, we will have a light at the end of the tunnel. From an economic perspective, this stimulus has been very significant. The monetary policy measures from the Federal Reserve have been not just very large, but also very broad, trying to make sure liquidity Charmin. is available in the fin financial market. Just on that market. point, yes, Charmin, sorry, on that point, your alternate worth clients, presumably some of them will have wanted to get their hands on some liquidity, maybe because they need to, or maybe because things look attractive at these points. How have you helped them do that? Uh, one thing that we've done since early February is host a series of client calls. And we've uh, tried to do a fair amount of education, provide information, and do hand-holding. So we'd like clients to be able to listen to, for example, what are people saying in the municipal market. So for U.S. clients that may have municipal bonds, there was uh, some illiquidity in the beginning. And we wanted to go through all the various measures that have been taken to provide more liquidity. We would uh, have someone talk about, for example, credit quality in the municipal market, both in general going into this crisis, as well as the benefits of the uh, CARES Act. So we do the handholding and the education either through client calls or through what we call our Sunday night insights so that people can actually see yes, what is going on. Yes, but what have you been so selling for them? What have you been able to sell for them so that they can make new investments? Well, liquidity in both the fixed income high quality market as well as the money market area has improved substantially. Is it perfect? Of course not, with the volumes required. But clients who have asked to be able to sell some of their high quality municipal bonds, high quality treasuries, money market funds, including commercial paper, prime money market funds, over the last several weeks, mm -hmm. liquidity has improved and they have been able to find liquidity there so either to keep it in cash or to put it into equity. As liquidity has improved here, how have clients been reacting to the changes in the market? What is the number one fear they still have in the middle of this uncertainty? I think the question about how the pandemic will, will evolve is top of mind. So if we look at the expected flattening of the curve, everybody, the, every, and by everybody I don't mean us in terms of people in the financial industry, but everybody in terms of scientists, infectious disease specialists, biodefense specialists, their general view is that we are going to see a flattening of the curve with extreme social distancing. And so the expectation is we're going to see some improvement over the course of April and May. And, and if people see that, 
then that would be a sense that would give them some comfort in and terms of the uncertainty here. With some of these drastic measures by the Federal Reserve, I know you believe that maybe some of these were very necessary like they were in the wake of 2008, but what are some of the longer term ramifications we'll see of a lot of these drastic actions? Uh, that's a question that many people are asking. What about the size of the fiscal stimulus? Uh, what does that mean for the increase in debt to GDP? What about the liquidity measures uh, of the Federal Reserve? I think the more important question is, do we actually know what would have transpired without these? And the trade-off is incredible downside now for some future issues down the road. And given our investment view that we've held now for about 10 years of American preeminence, and we could go through the reasons for that, our view, it is better to deal with the issue with a sense of immediacy and then think about the debt burden down the road. Uh, people raised these questions in 08, mm -hmm. and they said, what does this mean in terms of the Fed balance sheet and the size of the balance sheet? Speaking. What does that mean in terms of the debt trajectory? Right. But the U.S. dealt with that. Speaking. Strong institutions, rule of law, transparency, um, incredible resilience of the private sector to adjust, adjust and adapt, as we've seen with trying to make ventilators. And so our view is it is better to deal with this immediately and deal with the other long-term issues down the road.